Now, I'll just take a little bit of a guess. I wouldn't have a clue it is, but I think it might be Tony Lockett. Come on, big fella. <laughs> Well, you are a superstar, there's no doubt about it. It rests nicely on your shoulders, but the big question that Australia is asking, are you going to be right for tomorrow? You're in the side, you're selected, are you going to run out? No, I'm not, Rex. I've been... Uh, the medical staff have seen it fit to give me another week off, so very disappointing on my behalf, and I guess, uh, you know, after having half a week on the track, they just didn't think it was quite enough, so they've uh, decided to give me another week off and, uh, and come up for the week later. Very, very disappointing for you because you put in such a big pre-season. Very disappointing, Rex. It's probably the hardest I've trained uh, for, for quite a number of years, I think. And, you know, it wasn't... Uh, you know, I was on the track in November, which is something that's sort of hasn't happened for a long time, and I was very keen to, to really uh, put something back into the club that have been, you know, pretty good to me over the, the 12 years that I've been there. And, uh, you know, showed a little bit of form in the practice matches, I thought, and, uh, you know, to have a sort of a... A decent sort of injury like this so early on is very disappointing, but you know, it's just something that you've got to get over and, and get on with it. Well, you kicked three goals very early in the first quarter against North Melbourne. You looked in rare form and, and you came off the ground. I believe the medical staff said, Plugger, if you stay on the ground, you're going to really be a chance to miss eight or nine weeks. Was that the case? Yeah, well, that's what we're sort of still looking at. And, you know, the thing was, if, we, if I came back early, well, I could still have been looking at that. So, uh, you know, I know it's three or four weeks I've missed now, but that's probably better than, you know, if it happens again, it, you know, I could be looking at six to eight, so. And of course, uh, you know, you must have run over a cat or something like that, uh, I can't say a Chinaman, because I wouldn't say that, you know that. But uh, the most important thing is that you and Stuart Lowe mean so much to the side, and you and Stewie work in unison at centre half forward and full forward. What a disappointing thing. Yeah, well, Stewie's very disappointed. I mean, he's got a, you know, a terrible groin injury that's just taken months now to, to really come good, but, uh, you know, he, uh, He's a big chance of playing tomorrow, and uh, you know I just hope I hope that he uh, you know goes well if he plays, and you know gets a couple of early grabs where his confidence can really reap the benefit. You started in the early 1980s. We're now nearly midway through the 1990s, so you've you've travelled over two decades. What are the major changes you've seen in the commitment that you have to put to the game? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, you know, training and uh, commitment to the club is is you know I know it was it was very big back in the early 80s, but now we're seeing, you know, the players are just about required full time at, you know, at, at each and every football club. Training score, commitments not only the on the track but also uh, in the gymnasium and, and different little things that clubs do as in boxing and swimming and, and different fitness aspects of the game. So we're really seeing, uh, you know, I know at our club we train four and an optional night of five nights a week. So it's really be getting, coming, you know, full time and I think, you know, in the years to come that we are going to see a lot more players turn professional. Now your dad, he was... Well, Bob Davis said that he was probably one of the greatest bush footballers never to have played league football, and he's well thought of at the Boca Footy Club. I've been reading the history that Rob Asprey sent me down. How much of an influence was your famous dad on you as a kid? Oh, I guess he must have been some sort of influence on me, Rex. Uh, he quite often tells me that I used to annoy the, the hell out of him to get out on the road and kick the footy whenever he had any spare time sort of thing. But, you know, he's been, uh, like all fathers, he's been very good. He's been very, uh, very guiding to me. He never sort of interferes. Only when I've got a problem will he show his head sort of thing. And, and when I want his help, he's always there to help. But he never ever interferes with me football. And uh, I think that's probably uh, been a real telling factor. And sort of, you know, he's given me my own sort of responsibility on, uh, you know, on what I should do. And when I need help, I just uh, get on the phone. You seem a lot more relaxed. You seem a lot more at peace with Tony Lockett. Two years ago, if I rang you up on Friday and said, I want you in here for your show, you'd have told me to go forth and multiply. <laughs> now, you are here today, you're laughing. You seem pretty relaxed, mate. Pretty relaxed. Oh, I'm getting pretty old. And, you know, what, 28? Yeah, well, you know, I've had 12 years in the Cape now, and I guess that's... That, oh, you poor old thing. That's a fair time for any, any of the footballers, Rex, I guess. But, you know, I hope that I've, I can still give the St Kilda Football Club another good two or three years' service. Yeah. That's, you know, I, I think I really do owe them something after... You know, a, a couple of real frustrating runs with injuries. I mean, no, no one likes to be sitting out on the sidelines watching, especially me. It gets very frustrating. But, you know, I just want to get back and, and get back to something where I know that I can play. Finally, what a cruel game it can be. Stan Els, probably one of the most celebrated Melbourne captains of all time. He went to North Melbourne to play with the great Barassi <coughs> era, got his medallion, 
and now people are saying, gee, what's so different to him and uh, Kenny Sheldon? It is a cruel game, isn't it? Very cruel game. Coaching's probably the hardest aspect of, of, of our game of football, you know. Players uh, come and go a lot, but, you know, the coach has got to be the brunt of just about of all his team's performance, and not only of the seniors, but also of the seconds, I guess. But, uh, you know, Stan's a, a lovely bloke, a terrific fellow, got a lot of knowledge on, on the sport of football. You know, I'd just love to see him do well. He's, you know, he's been real good to yeah. me, and uh, you know, I know he's held in very high respect amongst all the, all the players at St Kilda. And uh, you know, we've had a little bit of a scratchy start to the season, but we are really looking forward to each game, week in, yeah. week out now, and we're going to give it our best for Stan. It's a long year, and let's uh, not uh, let the year go too far down the track. Um, before you and I went a line together, that was a good trip up at Darwin to Seven Spirit, Spirit Bay, and you like knocking those barramundi on the head. Oh, I think so, Rex, and I'm sure you told everyone that I did catch the biggest fish <laughs> for the trip. <laughs> I did. Well, Raquel, have we got uh, something here for uh, Tony Lock? I reckon we might have a Rex Hunt beanie, because uh, if we can fit it over his big buff head, Stephen. <laughs> okay, coming in here now, and have a look. Look at that catch first trip. Okay. It is the Rex Hunt Channel 7 yibbity yibbity beanie, mate, and I reckon we might put it on there like that, okay? <laughs> and this will be the greatest thing since Ron Black and Jerry G. And uh, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rex. This is I'm Rex Hunt, you're not.